the pro-immigration argument is just dead at this point. I don't see anyone making it anymore. No. Uh, I see people trying to mitigate the consequences of mass immigration and trying to say, well, I mean, we deserved it. It's a good thing, or it's somehow a duty of ours, or the economy will die, or the NHS will die. But no one ever says, no, 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 it's good to have lots and lots and lots of people come into your country, um, because it's obviously not. And this has become just undeniable. So this is, as you can see in the government's summary of the latest last year's immigration figures. Mm. I just thought we'd go through this chart, because yep. this is just fascinating. So the first thing to note is that in 2023, the government let in 3.4 million people. That's a staggering number of visas. Oh, God, yes. Like that's, that's thousands every day. They just must have a visa stamping machine that's just bum, 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 burrowing away printing visas, right? So thank God for um, electronics and automated systems, I suppose. Mm. Uh, this wouldn't have been made possible if it wasn't for advances in technology. Yeah. But um, so two million of those just under were visitor visas, which is great because I'm sure that every single one of those two million will eventually go home. I'm sure that they're not going to just disappear into an ethnic. Army. Really, Carl? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm very trusting of the establishment and the institutions. Uh, they've nearly found the acid attack right here. They, yeah. they only dredged the Thames and found three bodies that weren't him. Uh, he's gone forever. I'm just joking. Uh, I mean, what, what, what do you think will happen? that the guy missing an eye must have been easy to spot must have been easy to find disappears yes where could he have possibly gone like he couldn't have gotten a plane right you like you surely would have noticed him getting on a plane i thought he he'd been found dead nope they dredged the thames but none of the bodies they dredged up were his really yeah he's still just out there sorry to interrupt the video but i just want to let you know that we have a brand new selection of merch on our merch store uh, these won't be in the store forever so if you do want them go and get them now Thanks very much. They, they, they said, oh, we think he, he died in the Thames. It's like, okay, why do you think that? There's no evidence to suggest that. And you can't find his body. So why? But he's just going to have disappeared not forever. But anyway, so I'm sure that uh, all 2 million of these will eventually leave the United Kingdom. Mm. So that leaves us with 1.4 million uh, visas that were handed out. Mm. So let's beginning from the left. Safe and legal humanitarian routes. So refugees, 102,000. Uh, that's not the illegal immigrants it's to the tune of 50 to 60,000 a year, but okay, that's a relatively small percentage. Uh, then you've got 600,000 for study and 600,000 for work. It's like, okay, so do we have a massive labor shortage in this country? Are the universities undermanned? Mm -hmm. Are there not enough students applying for these universities? And the answer is, of course, no. And in fact, in some places, you get free education, like in Scotland. Is it with the 600,000 students? Yes. Uh, isn't it outrageous? I think, but like 400,000 are their um, dependents. Yes. Uh, we'll get onto dependents. Oh, okay, sorry. Fact, sorry. I keep preempting. I'm very sorry. <clears throat> yeah, I apologize. And then 81,000 family. It's like, right. So of this, as you can see, 600,000 are purportedly here to contribute to the economy. Mm. So the economic argument has died because almost, you know, like <laughs> three quarters of them will not be contributing to the economy from the government's own statistics. Right. Okay. Fine. Um, so we've got some more uh, granular detail. Uh, so there were 300,000 work visas granted. Um, and the rest, the two hundred, well, 337,000, and the 279,000 were dependents of the people who've been granted work visas. So when it says work, it's not 600,000. It's about half of that. Right. And the other half is dependents. Right. Who will be able to claim benefits, of course, in the country, um, which is just staggering. So the, the percentage of them might contribute to the economy has gotten even smaller and smaller and smaller. And this, again, it's just, it's just fascinating. Um, but uh, so they're trying to get skilled workers in, of course. But I mean, if you just look around the streets, you can see how many doctors and lawyers are just mm. plying their trade, like mm. in ancient Rome, saying, hey, you need a lawyer, sir. Mm. You, know, you can see them just doing it all over the streets. Uh, and they ended up giving up 300,000 uh, grants of settlement, uh, sorry, 119,000 grants of settlement and 200,000 grants of British citizenship, which of course is more than the previous year. Um, and so, right. If that's not open borders, what is open borders? Yes, yes. 
it's hard to imagine it being worse. Yeah. And just to be clear, this is the most people in a single year that have ever been let into the country mm. and more people that came to the country than since like 1066 or something ridiculous like that. Um, it's phenomenal. But this is also a part of a graph of, since Brexit, the Conservatives cramming as many people into the country as possible. Uh, you may remember that the year before this, it was 1.2 million people they let in. And the year before that, it was just a million. Mm. So they've been ratcheting up the number of people they've brought into the country. To what end? I'm not sure, because it's clearly not working. Mm. And so you got a lot of apologia for this. I think Fraser Nelson is a good um, example of this. Fraser Nelson is the editor of The Spectator, which is a, a newspaper that's closely aligned with the Conservative Party, has people moving in and out of it constantly. Uh, and his argument is, well, this was just an accident, bro. It's just an accident. Whoops. How can any country accidentally let in a million immigrants? Brexit was supposed to dial it all back, as everyone knew. Uh, so what went wrong? Well, the odd first odd sign, and I love when I'm reading this, make a note of how out of control everything feels. Mm. It doesn't feel like anyone's got the levers on the uh, hands on the levers of government here. It's like, what went wrong? The first odd sign was from the UK Visas Authority, which prides itself on issuing paperwork in good time and submitted a request for more staff to handle a quadrupling of demand. And so the Conservatives were like, well, I guess they have to have it then. Yes, yes. Why didn't you just refuse? Why didn't you just say, we don't care if the demand's gone up. You're not coming in. Interestingly, you know, <coughs> the Spectator did a, a leading article mm -hmm. about a month ago along similar lines, but basically saying when it comes to problems, you know, mass migration is quite a good one to have. Um, and you just think that you must either be on drugs or, <laughs> or, or, or indeed possibly on holiday, whatever it is. Yeah. I cannot believe someone could be so naive or indeed actually wrongheaded. You know, it gets better. So the conservatives quadruple, uh, the number of staff. And he says the dots were there, but no one had joined them. The number of dependent visas rose fourfold. Oh, did it mm. really? You've, you've got quadruple demand. You quadruple the staff and then you get fourfold number of dependent visas. <clears throat> I mean, the dots were there, but no one joined them. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it, no, it's not like you could have made that inference from the beginning. I mean, it's it's so insufferable to be gaslit like this. Mm. Are we supposed to believe that these people don't know how addition works? Mm. Is what they're saying. They're literally well. I mean, who could have predicted that if we'd increased the staff, that rubber stamp visas by four, we'd have had four times as many immigrants? Who yes. Could have known? Yes. I, it's insufferable. Um, and so the the Tory target to have six hundred thousand foreign students by twenty thirty. Why is that the target? Mm. Well, that was hit in twenty twenty one, an astonishing nine years early. Which is remarkable because the Conservatives hardly ever get anything done. Uh, three factors had blinded ministers to what was happening. Firstly, there was the wildly wrong modeling. Uh, the model they used was no more accurate with immigration than Sage was with COVID. Fantastic. Uh, the next was their crude calculation that for every 100,000 immigrants, that would mean a billion more headroom to lift spending or cut taxes. It didn't properly factor in all of the cost of public services or the rise in dependent visas. Worst of all, ministers had started to take such figures as gospel. When they, they had always stressed that the figures were simplistic and subject to significant uncertainty. So that is incredible, isn't it? It's like, right, so they've got a massively wrong model that literally says, well, we just divide the number of people by the, we multiply by the average wage, and that's how much extra money we're going to get. It's like, it doesn't work like that. And they themselves, the people who created the model, said, look, it doesn't really work like that. And yet, so... Fraser ends up going, well, I mean, the Tories seem to have blown it. It's like, yeah, but it's not just the Conservatives. Mm. It's all of you. Mm. You're all weirdly addicted to the idea of mass immigration as an economic growth model. Now, of course, uh, that didn't work. Uh, there's been zero growth. There's actually minus 0 0.03 or something mm. uh, growth in the economy. And, of course, this is just years of stagnation uh, because of mass immigration. Yes, basically everything that essentially uh, you were told was a good thing about migration uh, is not. And yes. I mean, we might well have seen seen this uh, ourselves, but they do not appear to. I think that there are, there's another point to this, I think, is that on the one hand, you've got this kind of sticking to this 
economic model you just uh, described to us and how wrong-headed it's been. I don't actually think it's entirely about that mass migration. I, yeah. I also think that there's been a sort of strange, unholy alliance between businesses who want this kind of, uh, you know, first of all, businesses who want cheap labour, then this sort of thing. But at the same time, there's also an incentive which is so anti-Britain yeah. that anything that in any way dilutes the sense of a nation, they will be behind. And I think they, you, there you've got all your people in your institutions. Yeah. There you've got them. Then you've got the, the money people here and you've got the politicians. So they might come from different angles, but these people... Right, the ones who cult, I'd say the cultural people, they just instinctively, going back to George Orwell, don't like this country, and they quite like anyone who's not from here. I mean, you know, I remember Peter Hitchens, I think, saying this. Is what people and David Goodhart said this. I think what people don't realise is when we were kind of young and we were very pro migration and, and lefty and all the rest, of it, that was actually a very strong, in, you know, strong motivating factor. A, dis, a general dislike of Britain. Yeah. And I don't think you can underestimate that. And now we have literally about 15 million people who have been allowed in under the auspices of a general dislike of Britain. So if it was a general like of Britain, I mean, you've got people like Andy No, who genuinely love Britain, mm. have a particular fondness for it. If we'd let in 15 million Andy Noes, things would be different. Mm. Uh, but we haven't. We've, we've imposed no demands on the people who have come in. And in fact, we've said, look, actually, you take precedence over the 45 million English and Welsh in England and Wales. And so actually, you don't have to really respect them. You don't have to respect their culture. And they're going to be forced to respect yours. Uh, and when this is done by native British people, it's got the sort of Orwellian character where it's obviously self-hatred. Mm. But this is being done under non-native British people, as uncomfortable as that might be to say. I mean, the Conservatives are proudly lauding that they are the most diverse party that has ever existed. Yeah, yes. And they're also bringing in the most people, so it doesn't even take on the aspect of self-hatred now. Mm. Now it looks like, and I'm not saying that it is, but if you're a non-political person and you're just looking, the Prime Minister is an Indian man. We're getting more Indian immigrants than ever. If the Prime Minister of India was an Englishman, and he was getting more English people over than ever, you would definitely draw a connection there. Mm. Now, I'm not even saying that there is a connection there, but it's got a strange smell about it. Well, I mean, I don't know about that, Chicago, because it seems to me that if, if it were kind of new, okay, there are more people than ever. Yes, I agree. But it was Boris Johnson I know. who liberalized, whilst telling us I know. that he was going to be firm, liberalized all the uh, migration controls which is this is a of which this is a part. Mm. Similarly, Liz Truss, people forget this when she had her brief period, was a actively wanted more migration. Mm. So I think that I'm, it, not, I'm not saying it is about that. No, I can. You, I, know I can see saying, where a lot of basically, people have that impression yeah. and look at it. Yeah, it's just. I think that it's just purely historically. Um, they're all to blame. Theresa May, right. David, well, Blair is the initiator. The ultimate in, yeah, yeah, right. Blair going right from there. So we've sort of, okay, we have an Indian prime minister. Um, I don't really think that he's behaving in any less consistent way as, say, you know, Theresa May. Every single one of them. And particularly right. Boris Johnson, actually. Because mm -hmm. underneath all that fluster and all the rest of it, they actually were, they redefined what they meant by uh, controlling our borders. Oh, he said he called it Global Britain, didn't he? Yes, Global Britain, but also taking back control. I, we can say how many people come in. Now, your average person in the street would take that to mean a certain, but they use this sleight of hand. So basically what they're saying is, yes, it might well be more, but at least we're deciding. Well, well that's that, not what people meant. I agree. I, com I completely agree. But the, the only reason I bring it up is because of Rishi Sunak's scaremongering about the far right, right. and concern about identity. And so yes, I, and I completely agree with you. Sunak is completely cut from the same cloth. Mm. But to the person who's not engaged with politics and doesn't know that previous prime ministers had done this, I mean, like you say, there's been a sleight of hand. So when Boris Johnson comes out and says, we're going to control our borders and be global Britain, the average person hears the Englishman saying, I'm going to reduce immigration. Yes. Not true, obviously. Yeah. But that's, I think, what the average person is seeing. 
And now we're at a position where we've got, oh, there's an Indian man as prime minister who voted for him. And they'll see headlines like this being like, oh, there's a, there's an immigration surge. This is the highest immigration that has ever happened. Yeah. Rishi yeah. Sunak. Yes. I, I can see why there's a fear of the far right because if only through ignorance, I bet there are plenty of people who are in their living rooms just around the country making that connection, whether you like it or not. And I, like I said, I don't think it's even there. I think Rishi is just completely normal yeah. as a conservative prime minister. Oh, he's, he's, he's sort of almost beyond cliche. Yeah, in, 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 he's, a, he's a total technocrat. Yeah. I, I would have thought, actually, when, uh, when he said, you know, uh, the far right in Islamism and the far right, did he actually say Islamism? He didn't say Islamism. No. Um, I don't when think... he talked about the far right, yeah, um, I took that to mean a little warning. I think you might have actually alluded to it earlier in the program. Yeah. But actually, what if, for example, you are really, like many people, actually we can now say in the mainstream, we should end migration, we should have a call a halt to it, we should have a moratorium. Yeah. That's no longer that controversial to say. But that, presumably, he's trying to sort of basically triangulate that to be an extreme position. I think so. I think so. And you know? But, the, but again, what this does, to, to like your average working mum who just sees the things that are in front of her eyes yes. rather than knowing anything about the political philosophy or the history of it, that is an Indian man saying, you are not allowed to say, I don't want any more immigrants. Mm. That's an evil far-right position. And so, like I said, it's not, I, I completely agree with you. I think Rishi is actually embarrassingly normal for a conservative. Like, I don't, like, with someone like Sidi Khan, you can definitely get the feeling there's probably a sense of ethnic interest in Sidi Khan. I actually don't get that feeling from Rishi Sunak at all. But that doesn't mean that that won't be drawn by people who don't know anything about the situation. And so, or James Cleverly. I mean, same sort of thing. Not, yeah. Not same. I mean, I, possibly if people draw those conclusions, you know, they draw those conclusions. But, mm. I mean, I'm not trying to sort of... Uh, I'm actively not trying to just circumvent what you're saying. Um, just that they just seem all of a piece to me. Uh, and you are completely correct. I think, you know, and correct. there's nothing, there's no difference between yeah. what he's saying to what Cameron, to what Blair, to all of them. And there's no difference in the actions either. There's no difference. In fact, you could also say, well, well why doesn't the, the lady not pay much attention, as you say, the, the, the working woman? Um, she could look to Swella Bravemans. Yeah. And she could say, well, actually, she's speaking the truth, but she's actually, And a lot are. Yes. A lot are. You see, um, you know... Uh, but I mean, she's a, a different ethnic minority. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, but... And I'm sure that... I don't think it's about racism. That's the thing. Yeah. I don't think it's about racism. I don't think the average person who's seeing this thinks, I hate Indians or something like that. Because I think Swella Braveman is actually... Very, and Pretty Patel mm. was very popular with the average working... British oh, yeah, person. Yeah, definitely. They were actually because they were actually doing the right thing. That's the reason they had to go. <laughs> That's exactly the reason they had to go. But I also I also think that they aren't insensible to the idea that there may be people taking advantage of them in an ethnically particular way. And I think that's why people genuinely hate Sadiq Khan. But there's genuine hatred because he does seem to side with Islamists. And I think that's a lot why a lot of people hate Jeremy Corbyn as well, is that he sides with People who generally don't like us, but um, but anyway, let's let's carry on with this quickly. Um, so uh, Fraser Nelson, of course, is just openly pro immigration, of course, <coughs> and we'll tell you this. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, so getting onto the Home Office, they've decided they're going to move forward at pace with their biggest plan for the biggest ever immigration cut. And it's like right, that's that's a great point. Uh, so if we uh, quadruple immigration. <laughs> And then have a twenty five percent cut. Mm. We've only times it by three. So, uh, but we can also say, well, this is the biggest immigration cut ever, mm. which is just wonderful. I mean, it just would you believe these people that they're planning on cutting immigration, uh, considering they're the ones who are literally just rubber stamping as many people in as possible. Of course. Also, you know, it's worth making a point here that yeah. these so called uh, new conservatives, I think, the new conservative group, quite big. Right. of MPs, yeah. they are kind of trumpeting the fact that they are going to bring immigration down to 200. Oh, yeah, I know. You know and it's like, sort of it was, that was a catastrophe when Tony Blair instituted yes. it. 
<laughs> net migration has got to be 200,000 yeah. for what? Yeah. You know, I mean, so we end up at the worst possible position in 10 years time rather than have it now. I'd, I'd kind of rather have it now, actually. So, you know, there's, I mean, there is an advantage to the conservatives being apparently incompetent, uh, which is it hurries forward this conversation. But, um, but anyway, so yeah, the, um, <laughs> the Institute for Fiscal Studies kind of had to admit, guys, this immigration thing isn't making us money. Mm. It's not making us money. It's, this is just not how that works. This doesn't work like that. In fact, it's going to destroy us. Uh, the respected think tank said that Britain's tax burden would jump by 2030 as frozen tax thresholds mean inflation pushes more people into higher brackets and corporate tax weighs on businesses. So the tax burden is set to rise sharply even after tax cuts in autumn. Uh, Britain will be paying an extra $66 billion this year compared to the scenario uh, would have been. And by 2028, the tax revenues will be equivalent to £104 billion. Mm. Fantastic. So we can see that it's not improving the NHS, it's crushing the NHS. Mm. It's not improving public services, it's crushing public services. It's not improving the, the roads or the infrastructure, it's crushing the infrastructure. It's not reducing the cost of houses or doing anything other than increasing the cost of houses. Mm. It's not doing anything good to the country. Yeah. And it's costing us money. Mm. You're paying for it. That's the thing. You're paying for this privilege. And again, when it comes to like benefits, I just can't understand for the life of me how it can be possible that someone born outside of this country can claim benefits inside of this country but that that shouldn't be allowed and yet as you can see this is social housing occupied by people who are born outside of this country i mean london the the stats oh, yeah. came out fairly recently 47 yeah. percent of social yeah, housing nearly half yeah is and it's 25 percent overall it's like that should be zero percent sorry but i can't go to spain or i shouldn't be able to go to spain and be like, okay, Spanish government, give me a house. That shouldn't. That should be a never event. I mean, and I can you imagine the audacity of it as well? Like, I would expect the Spanish government to say, why would we do that? Well, I mean, for example, in in London, where it's nearly half the most say, expensive place in Britain, most expensive place in Britain. Um, the the measure for social housing was changed famously from local connection. Do you remember people used to go on the list? Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, My local, wife was on the list. Yes, she was exactly. Going, had to wait and wait, wait. It was changed from that to with greatest need. And when that was changed, therefore, of course, people turning up, maybe with a couple of kids, uh, nothing on, they have the greatest need or whatever. Um, so that was changed. Now, either out of sheer kind of a sense of, uh, you know, citizen of the world, blah, 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 or indeed out of political ideology, well, is, is moot. But... What it has done is entirely change whole areas, not least of all the East End, yeah. uh, you know, which is no longer, well, it recognisable in any form. It's mad, isn't it? Mm. It's mad that mm. the people of Britain are housing just people mm. from other countries at their own expense mm. in their capital city. Yeah. I, I just, when you, if you were to go back just 20, 30 years and say to people, this is what they're going to do. Yeah. People are saying, we'll never do that. That's crazy. Of course we're not going to do that. And yet here we are. So it's just mad. But then I suppose the solution to all of this is just stop collecting the data on it. So the Dep Department of Work and Pensions have decided to, as Neil O'Brien MP, Conservative MP, uh, points out, that it's going to stop publishing data on welfare claims by nationality because then you won't know that you're being taken advantage of. Um, and uh, basically, Neil O'Brien, the MP here, he is complaining about this, is he? Yes. He's, yes. Yeah, he's actually in opposition to this, which is nice. Okay. Um, but they've stopped publishing on it, because why do you need to know that? Well, isn't this a situation in Europe, I think? Well, Many European countries. Oh, again? yeah, absolutely. France is yeah. terrible for yeah. data collection. And uh, basically, it's effectively an admission of guilt, isn't it? Yes. Why would you not do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you love data on absolutely everything. Yeah. Apart from when it comes to nationality and, say, mm -hmm. tax receipts and benefit claimants, mm. uh, then it's bad because it makes you look like you're taking advantage of the working people of the country. Um, and that's only because you are. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Lads Hours, this one on whether or not cats or dogs are left or right wing. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.